that if someone wants to see what quality does a true companion of an imam have, it's this, that he strives for knowledge. He's always looking. And often the, the typical cliche answer. So in the way that often people say this was a majlis, the person on the member said something very cliche. We also know cliche things that you do. So in the way that you say that we do things very cliche and typical, often people do the same thing. What do they say when a person says study and gain knowledge? I don't have time. I'm busy. I myself know people that are not students of Hausa, that are not ulama, that are not from uh, Hausa families, that are very normal, that run businesses, that work. Yet the quality they have is that whenever they can, they dive into the uloom of Ahlul Bayt they read as much as they can. They ask as many questions as they can. This is a true quality. No matter how busy you are, you can take time. When it comes to Shah Ramadan and the person wants to make sure that his body is fit, he will do iftar quickly and pray salah quickly and run to the gym at the, in midnight of Shah Ramadan. Or he'll take as much, uh, he'll always make sure he has time to work out and exercise. There's time for that. There's time to strengthen my body. Take time to strengthen your nafs and soul. With the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam. This reminds me of an anecdote that I heard from one of the teachers of the Hawza. Who heard from his teacher. His teacher was Ayatollah Shaykh Murtada al-Ha'iri. Rahmatullah Ali. Ayatollah Shaykh Murtada al-Ha'iri is the son of Ayatollah Abdul Karim Ha'iri who founded the, or refounded the Hawza of Qum. He was buried in the shrine, shrine of Sayyidah Ma'asum wa salamullahi alayha. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala. So this person that narrated to me, the teacher, he says, I went to my teacher's house, Sheikh Murtada Ha'iri, one day. And whenever I would meet him, I would pester him. Because I could see that from Zahir and Batin, from outside and inside, this person has certain spiritual qualities that I was 100% certain that this person must have met Sahib Zaman at least once in his life. So whenever I would meet him, I would ask. And he would tell me, go away and go study. Do you have nothing better to do here? Tell me to go. Till one day I came to his house in the afternoon and I said, tell me, there must have been one occasion. Increase my iman. Tell me. So again, he says, don't you have lessons to study and things to prepare for tomorrow? So he says, Sheikh, now I've done preparation. Just tell me. In fact, until you don't tell me, I'm not leaving your house. So they were standing at the door of the house and the Sheikh says, do you see this door handle? He says, yes. He said, hold on to it. So I went and I touched it. Sheikh Murtada Ha'ari said, you have just touched the same handle that was touched a few years ago by Sahib Al-Zaman. Allahumma salla. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He says, why? Now often people think these stories of people being able to see Sahib al-Asr were 200, 300 years ago. This wasn't that long ago. Sheikh Murtada Ha'ari didn't die very long ago. His students are still alive. They know him. They studied with him. Faqih and jurist. So the Sheikh asked Sheikh Murtada. He said, when? How? He said, my father, when he opened this Hawza, the first year there were 500 students in Qum. Only 500 students studying in the city of Qum. He says, when he first opened the Hawza, the winter time came. Now this Aba, you can wear it in summer and it's very good. Wear the same thing in winter and it's useless. In winter, especially in, for example, Qum and these places, you get very cold. This won't do you any good. So they come to him, these a few students, and they complain. They said, look, we have no money. We have no wealth. Whatever we have, you give, you provide food, you provide accommodation. We need abas to wear in the winter time, cloaks to wear in the winter time. We don't have money for this. So Sheikh Abdul Karim Ha'ari says, no problem. Come to me in two, three days, and I will have 500 abas ready to distribute to all of the students of Qum. So Sheikh Murtada is the son. As soon as his father said this, Sheikh Murtada comes and says, Dad, Maybe he didn't say that. What father, Sheikh Nahajara. He said, we've got no money at home. At home, the money that you use to uh, allow the house to run, we've got no money. How did you promise these people? So he didn't reply. 
Sheikh Murtada says, in our house, every single night my father would pray Salatul Layl as is the, the practice of awliya of God and those people that are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, the night before he has to give those abba, we've got nothing at the house. Instead of praying his Salatul Layl in his room, he would come out into the courtyard. He would undo a few of his buttons. He would roll up his sleeves. The certain etiquettes of certain dua that a person does in his last moments when he's got no other option. He would come out into the courtyard and I would see him crying whilst he's doing his Salatul Layl that his whole beard was covered with his tears. Until as he is praying in the middle of the night, Sheikh Muntada al-Ha'ari says that there was a knock on the door. My father said, Murtada, go and open it. He says, when I went to open the door, a person, I didn't see his face, he was holding onto that doorknob. He says, Sheikh Abdul Karim, I had given you the command to open the Hawza, but to take care of the students of religion is my responsibility. He gave those 500 Aba, Sheikh Murtada al-Ha'ri would say, still today I could see some students wearing the same Aba that was bought to them by Sahib al-Zaman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's a'amma love people that go towards knowledge, they take care of people that go towards knowledge. How many times does a child, a youth, wish to study the religion of Ahlul Bayt salam, and his parents or her parents come and say, how will you earn money and how will you survive and the dunya is very difficult? Sahib Zaman takes care of a student of knowledge better than he takes care of anyone else. In addition to that, when we speak about these people, their thirst for knowledge, we're not just talking about people that go to Hawza and study. Every single person should be someone that drinks from the fountain of Ilm of Ahlul Bayt That constantly asks questions, that delves into what they gave us, that asks the ulama. If you have someone that you ask, he doesn't know the answer, he can go and ask someone else to fulfill your life with and enrich your life with Uloom of Ahlul Bayt.